wasn't that just fantastic? As a daughter of a disabled mother, it was so wonderful to um, have Dermot warm up for me and to have the local OMA people at the end as well. So well done to all the speakers today. I'm here to talk to you because I am a poet in a school in London. And I tell you what, it is a far cry from the all girls Catholic grammar school that I attended in this very town. And that is because our students come from over 50 different countries. 75% of them don't have English as a first language. So when I got to that school, I just thought, How, what am I going to do with these kids? And, um, and what I realized was that nobody was middle class. Because this is a piano lesson free zone. There's no encyclopedias at home. The laptop has to feed 13. My granddad went to school on an odd, wet day. The head teacher apologized to my father when he got in to university because school didn't think a bankrupted shopkeeper's son had much in him, just another brogan. They said, be a Catholic teacher, they won't employ you as an engineer. I'm glad dad didn't listen. I've swapped stage and mic for whiteboard and PowerPoint. Encore for poetry's boring miss. And how do I tell these kids to get 27K in debt for the liberation my dad got with a grant? What can get them beyond child protection, illiteracy, the PlayStation? What can I possibly teach them if they're lost before they're born? Write a poem about it simply isn't good enough. The rich write history, the rest tell stories. So write it down and tell it well. But what I found was that I couldn't really get them to write very much at all. So what I did was I got them to all just do one line. I gave them sentence starters so that they were taken away from the intimidation of the blank page. I couldn't get them to stand up one by one in front of you because I'm sure, as many of the speakers know, it's very intimidating to get up in front of an audience. So what I did was I got the whole class up and I got them to say their line one after the other. And what I also found was that they wouldn't listen to each other. I could not get them to be quiet. So I brought in a sound recorder and we recorded each line in a kind of Mexican wave effect and I played it back to them and they realized that they who thought they could never write, who thought that their story wasn't interesting, that they together had created a poem. So then what we did was, I got them to draw, I got them to animate their line, I brought in a BAFTA award winning animator and we created a little video. I come from the place where there is no communication, where people talk to themselves to try and get inspiration because no one else can. I come from a friendly neighbourhood who care for each other. I come from where people work all day just to feed their kids at night. That's just a short bit, of, but I think it gives you a real idea about what it's like for these kids who are among the most deprived in the UK. But you might think, why get a poet in? Of all things, aren't we in a time of austerity? Shouldn't we be spending this money on something else rather than some Oma girl as a full-time poet in a London school? But as part of the programme, the Spoken Word Educator programme, what I was doing an MA writer teacher at Goldsmiths and I interviewed my students and I asked them what was the effect that this was having? And what I discovered was that it allowed them to connect with character, culture, and community. Now this is Huda. What she said was that poetry made her experience at Lamas much more fun. She got recognition. She was able to understand other people's feelings and improve her literacy. That she was a shy person, but it gave her confidence, and that she now felt more able to express herself. 
Through writing poetry, students were able to discover who they were, to express themselves and to gain confidence. Go for it. Make sure you do it because writing poetry is a way of expressing the feelings. Because when I was younger, I used to go for bullying and I used to write poetry all the time and for my father, for my mother. And that actually showed people what I'm feeling inside, what's going through my head. And they actually stopped judging me without actually knowing who I am and what I am here for today. It felt so amazing. You know that motivation when you just want to smile all the time, you know, it's just like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm so... Yeah, you know, when you're like so happy for doing, for being proud of yourself, for doing a thing that you've never done before. So what I see the work as is really an, in an inoculation. Hopefully one day my students will be on a stage like this and they'll think back to when they were 11 and they got the opportunity to perform just like I did when I was seven in the old town hall, if anybody can remember that. It also allows them to engage with culture, but not as passive recipients of that culture, but as active creators of it. And they are motivated to write through being able to compete as well. Now, we, my students have won lots of different competitions. This one here said she felt honoured because she didn't think that her poem was any good, but she felt more confident because she'd achieved something great, which was coming second in one of the most prestigious writing competitions in the UK. What I also found was that the students were much more motivated by the idea of putting a poem on YouTube than writing in the back of their book. Now we all know what happens to school books at the end of the year. A teacher very sadly dumps them in the bin, yes? But if you put it on YouTube, what it means is that these children can can watch it wherever they want to watch it. It also means that when I was a child, we used to have our pictures up in the kitchen and everyone who visited our house would just say, oh, aren't your children great? Look at that, lovely pictures. Now what my students do is their parents share their uh, poems on their Facebook walls. These kids who are some of the most recently arrived in the UK, who come and go all the time, can always access their work no matter where they are. And what I also found was that to be honest, writing a poem wasn't that appealing for the average 13-year-old London child. So what I did was I brought in a bit of rapping. Now, it, you might not know to look at me, but back in the day, I used to be a wee bit of an MC. So what I'd say to them is, like, can you give me a beat? Now, I don't know, does Oma have rhythm? <laughs> that was enthusiastic. So what I need from you guys is I need you to give me the beat. Do you think you can do it? Mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Forget the mic check, gotta keep the brain in check, avoid the train wreck. By eating properly, sleeping soundly. Expose yourself to beauty, stay in your room moody. Indulge in art, express your heart, find an outlet that is set by yourself for your own health, cultivate creative wealth. Stay away from the voices, remember you have choices, but voices must be expressed, but not in your head, in a line, a rhyme, a painting, not waiting to have your say. Don't play computer games all day and smoke joints till you can't connect the points out of your stars, your czars, your totems. I have my poems to keep my sanity, to speak with no one. Listen to me. So put it on paper and the pen will wafer until you can decipher the future as a lover, not a hater. still got it you know all right so um then what we did was we said to the kids okay let's make a music video but we didn't want to just make a music video about any old thing we wanted to engage them with issues so we made something that I couldn't really conceive happening in the convent grammar school we made a music video about homophobic bullying Same generation, I was a prize for the kids at school. Remember, don't let them get to you. Be yourself, no matter what. And we need to equal up. Yeah, there's always things changing. All the same, waiting for the young words, make your own choice. For the young words, make your own choice. For the young words, make your own choice. We have to conform to the norm, but just to be hypothetical, all is conventional. Suddenly walks down the road and becomes a spectacle. Can't even remember the last time we got a look that wasn't skeptical. All the love me, shame me, can't get through. We can get we can live this life without being you. All the love me, shame we can get through. We can live this.
did a lot better than me, don't you? So through having a poet in the school, my students are able to have an external audience that they wouldn't otherwise have. They've been performing in Parliament, they've been working with all these organisations here, they've um, presented at Goldsmiths University. Anya here said that um, because she worked on this video, it made her want to change the world. And at 13, from one of the most deprived areas of the UK, to be able to tell MPs about what work she's doing in schools is an amazing opportunity that is going to open her eyes for the rest of her life and give her permission that she is allowed to be in those spaces. And um, community, it builds community. Now, whenever you've got people from all over the globe, from places like Somalia, from Pakistan, when you've got 16 different Eastern European languages alone, how do you build community? Poetry is a way of developing empathy and understanding in a flash. And that is why we need a poet in every school. Don't waste food, please understand the pain of the food. For the food while it's tossed in the bin Lying that you eat all your food when it's in the bin It's a huge hint, I see the winner's tint As you hide from the truth, words hurt But so do their bellies are white Use your tears fly through their eyes It's a surprise how the government ignores the cries The supermarket lies and all this food waste Will lead to our demise Our demise, our demise Dante, absolute legend of a child Isn't he great? He is great, isn't he? And this all plays into each other through connecting with their character. They have the confidence to be able to create and to, be, and to connect with culture. Through connecting with culture, they're able to build community. Also, what I find is that my students have a bomb in their bedroom. Now, it's interesting that, um, to be in OMA today because when I was 13, there was a bomb in my high street. These students may not have a bomb in their high street, but they have a bomb in their bedroom that goes off silently, that nobody knows, and they feel the guilt, the anger, the shame, and the fear. But poetry allows them a space where they can have those difficult conversations, where they can reveal and deal with those hard parts, those broken things in their lives. Poetry needs an audience. It needs space, it needs community, it needs time, and it needs security. And schools need poets, because poets provide outside opportunities. They're an artist, not a teacher. It motivates students through being able to create, and also it builds long-term relationships. Well, having a poet is pretty, it's fun, especially when you have this program. I, I wasn't like a really good writer, and then, she actually edits my work sometimes and helps me and says what's right and fixes my poems and yeah, it's kind of being cool. violent. Yeah, I'm not violent. Well, me. Oh yeah, you're violent. I'm not violent. Lies. <laughs> So I think it would be much better for all of us. I remember when I was a teenager and my daddy used to say, don't you take it out on my hinges every time we would slam the doors. And I think we all could feel like there's a time when instead of punching a wall, we could pick up a pen. So I'd urge all of you to go anytime you feel stressed, you feel anxious, you feel like you can't connect, you can't communicate, write about it. Write for yourself and you will find those questions and those answers in yourself because the question is often more interesting than the answer. If your brain were clay, how would you mould it? I'd sculpt my anxiety into a timetable so every time I felt invisible, you would have to look at me. I would beat my voice into a bell to shift Thousands of uniforms. It seems the world teaches us to be frantic, as if being busy is a badge pinned proudly to our blazer, while our heads drip onto desks, hoping our brains won't bunk. How can ambition run in a school skirt that is too tight, too short, to unroll past our dreams? 
I'm soothing the child in me, tantruming in the road, stuck too close to the fire of other people's anger, burning my best dress, sat in detention, beating myself up, with the ghosts of the bully from primary. I'm writing myself a note, but not a PE forgery. It reads, write, for your life is a series of lessons, not one big test. Stress is an option you don't need to take. Question and answer yourself.